when you're doing a split thread dubbing loop, okay, so I'm going to do my dubbing loop where I'm going to double over the thread. Oh, sorry. Going this way. Okay, so I've got my dubbing loop here set. Oh. So now I have my thread up here, right? So I can put this dubbing loop together, and if I've got too much dubbing in it, I just tie off. Whereas if you split, if you do a split thread dubbing loop, if you've got too much dubbing in there and you get to the end, it's hard to pull it out. So you can't, because there's no way to tie it and cut it off, right? So I always, regardless, I, I just double it over and use a dubbing uh, tool. So you can, you can use some wax on this. Just hit it with a little bit of wax. And I'm using an Arizona dubbing on this just because it's... Uh, somewhat of a blend of natural and synthetic but it gives a bit of a sheen and it's longer longer strands but again just a tiny tiny pinch here I'm just gonna you can sort of align it pull it out okay and I'm gonna put this in the loop and that's probably almost too much so I'm just gonna pinch some out of there and slide it up Okay, so that's all I need for the body, just like that. So I'm going to just hold it and start to spin whatever tool you have to spin it. And then I'm going to, I just want this to be, I want this to trap air. We're tying an emerging caddis here, right? So you know LaFontaine and the, you know, his, all of the concept around trapping air bubbles and stuff. Well, this is kind of an emerging pupa. So you can take your your hackle plier or whatever Oop, just caught that and uh, you could use your your uh, rotary tool or your bobbin cradle or whatever so I'm just gonna isn't that neat I so get one spin that up and that's where I have extra that I if I split the thread and just put in a split thread I gotta wind it all on unless you pulled it out so this is just handier for me. Okay, so pretty sparse body on that. But again, I want it sparse because I just want that to kind of come back over. So you can see tying a smaller one, you can tie it on a much smaller hook and you're, the bug is actually extending beyond the hook. So if you're tying like this in a 16 is actually going to be the overall size, as you can see here, of a solid 14. So it's tough. You can go with a shorter shank and try and keep your uh, everything down. So I got a nice buggy dubbing loop there. Um, and then you're going to take a piece of Swiss straw or medallion <coughs> sheeting. And a piece here. But anyway, this stuff's actually, it looks like it's, it's used for, it's really model. And it's really, actually really tough stuff, but you can use it. Um, for wings on spinners and stuff like that, but it just kind of gets, I, I use it a lot for this uh, caddis wing on this particular pattern. The more it gets chewed up, the better it seems to work. So you don't worry if your wing starts to get split and tattered. It's it, it's almost better better with, with heavy use. So I'm gonna cut a piece about, I don't know, about maybe a quarter inch wide on this size. What I'm gonna do is, just to be finicky, I'm gonna just cut a little bit of an angle on the back wing here. Okay, so it's just slightly tapered. And I'm going to take this and I want it just to extend back over the back of the bend of the hook. And so I don't bind it, I'm just going to do a loose wrap and two tighter wraps like that. Okay, just make sure it's on top. And then if I wanted to really make it, you don't need to do this, but I could take it and just cut a little bit and you can get a bit of a wedged wing in there but it's really just to kind of help trap air okay so I've tied that and now I'm going to take it and pull it back on itself and give it a couple more wraps okay so there's that I'm going to pull that over then for a wing case um, you can take any any bird feather you want this is a hung Hungarian partridge but you could use any soft soft hackle or whatever and Davey actually palmers this, but I find I just don't like it. I just, I'll just pull some legs off this. You could use mallard or whatever, um, but just to give it a bit of legs, I'm just going to take, uh, take that and tie them in on the sides. 
and just back to the to the bend of the hook or whatever whatever you think. So those are just kind of on the side and down on that side. And then take a few more and, and just sparse. And I'll tie them in here on the other side and try and get them uniform both sides. So loose turn and then a couple harder turns. So that's just giving it a bit of legs, a few legs on the bottom. Trim those off. Okay. So I'm just building a bit of a taper so that because I am going to do a loop, another loop here. So I just want to make sure that it's not going to slide forward. Um, so I'm going to do another loop. So I'm doubling the thread over. A couple turns, and then I this locks it in. So I just spun it around, and that locks the loop in nice and tight. Okay. And I'm going to use, so, so here for the, the thorax, I'm going to use this uh, squirrel dubbing. This, it's got uh, a bit of sheen. It's got some synthetic in it, but it's also got the guard hairs from uh, squirrel. So it's really spiky and buggy. It's awesome. Just a tiny bit. That's cool. I'm squirrel. I would never do that. And again, just because I'm, I'm using the, this loop technique, I can tie off if I've got too much in there. And I don't want a lot. The loops, you know, they're not, they don't take that much longer, but if you're looking for something more buggy, then it's definitely the way to go. <clears throat> and you don't need it, if it's all bulky like that, you can pick it out. And, and spin it up again. Like I'll, I'll take some of those clumped sections out so I have a nice uniform kind of rope. Okay. Let's cut her again. You've done it before. Ooh. <laughs> Lost earth. This thing is kind of sharp and <clears throat> and it's going to come forward. Two over top. Just one to lock it in and behind. That loop kind of kind of lost it there. And I use the same loop technique for giant streamers. Like I, I can, I'll have a loop this long and I'll use it for like big materials. I'll use a heavier thread obviously, but right. when you talk about brushes, I don't know who I was talking to about brushes, but um, I played around making brushes and I find I don't use them anymore. I just, whatever brush I'm going to use, I throw it in the loop. And then you have the bulk of the material and you can play around with it a lot more. Um, so this is looking pretty good. It's pretty buggy, but I'm going to just pick it out a little bit. Okay, if there's too much in there, just yank some out. And then I'm going <clears> to <throat> sort of preen that down. And then fold this wing case forward and just kind of pull everything back. So then I'm going to pinch it on top. Give it a couple turns there. Okay, so there's that wing case to keep everything down, lock it down, trim that off, so again the more, this is ultra buggy but as an emerging pupa or whatever, like I'll nymph this on the bottom, but this is one of those things with the drop shot rig that I'll, if, if there's fish starting to work, I'll, I'll put